Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Aloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatleeb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. As for once, we, we do in fact have fun storming the castle. Well, technically it's a citadel, but same difference. Also, I guess we're inside it, so it's more, more of an invasion than a storming. The storming was outside. Then again, who's going to argue with us? All the dead guys? Anyway, let us proceed. Cold iron. Yeah, we're uh, we're actually not too far off from meeting up with a storyteller again. Relatively speaking, I mean, it is still going to be a while. Oh, hi. This is awkward. I guess I should probably kill you. Not fast enough. But we did still get surprised, so nothing to really worry about. Oh, nice. Prepare yourself. And problem solved. Oh, this is, uh, I, I know exactly what this is. This is the single most lethal encounter in Act 2. So we, we are not going to take any chances here. Though we don't really have a whole lot to play with right now. I guess we'll use one of our last haste spells. And yeah, we'll fire off a communal protect. Okay, no one actually wants to read that scroll, so we'll just do it this way. All right, that'll have to do. And we'll just ease our way in and kind of chill out for a moment. Careful now. Hey guys, don't mind us. You just do your thing. We'll just focus on knocking this trap out. You're doing great, guys. Keep it up. And uh, just hold. We don't want to interrupt. And here we go. Mortals, it will be fun 
It will be tasty. Ow. Yeah, th this guy's gonna hit pretty much anything he attacks. Thirty-three AC. That that's not too bad. We can reasonably hit that. I think they may have uh, toned him down a bit. Go for the easy kill. And no such luck. I'm going to need you guys to hit more than that. Yes, more like that. Thank you, Lan. Though he is still at 75%. Darren, run! And Zorm's dead. It's fine. We can fix that. Yes, Regil. Oh my goodness, we, we had no right to uh, take him down so easily. And we pulled 10,000 experience points. That just catapulted us up right to the next level. Wow, yeah, that was, uh, that was exhilarating. I was really expecting him to take down more of our party. And that nets us the Ring of Chaotic Fascination. A Ring of Protection plus two that also grants plus two on DCs and saves for enchantment spells. Sadly, I don't think that actually works with Slumber, but we'll go ahead and slap it on Ember anyway. Yeah, if you actually attack the summoners... You ruin the ritual, and you end up fighting the summoner's leader instead. She's the gal that, um, that Blightmaw exploded right after he was summoned. That's still a tough fight. She's a high-level caster, but then you completely miss the optional boss. And this way, you still get her loot, too, because she's splattered all over the floor. Lucky Dice. These dice randomly grant the owner a plus one luck bonus on an attack or damage roll, or to AC during an enemy's attack once per day. This effect lasts for the whole day. It's written a bit awkwardly, but uh, basically, from what I understand, that grants one of those three random bonuses for an entire day to a single person. And then it recharges each morning. And since it's a luck bonus, it stacks with most other buffs. Then we also pulled an assortment of mid-tier scrolls and some other assorted gear, plus that agile dagger. But the lucky dice is our big get here. Which we'll toss to Kaz. There we go. Wait, so what did that get us? Ah, plus one to AC. I can certainly live with that. A 
magic circle covered with occult symbols. The runes have absorbed all the blood that was spilled in the circle. More scrolls. The air smells like magic powders, unknown chemical compounds, and medicine. A lesser rod of reach. That's handy. Well, we definitely want that on Ember. So... I guess we'll drop the potion. Despite the surrounding mess, the magical devices were kept clean and tidy. All right, I think that's everything, so uh, let's hit the pause button real quick. I, um, I did not think we would be hitting level 10 this quickly, so I am only partially prepared for this. I'll have to dig up my notes, take a look at our options, and then uh, we'll get this taken care of. We'll be right back. So, yeah, I've looked at our options, and it turns out that this is a very simple level up. A lot of our party members don't even get any significant options, at least outside of class and skill distribution. That said, let's uh, run through it real quick. First up, we've got Vex, who continues stacking levels into Hunter. As aforementioned, we're pretty much done with Knife Master, so this will bring us up to Hunter 6. That nets him plus one base attack and plus one to all his saves, as well as a new spell and a free teamwork feat, which he will automatically share with Kaz. Skills are still set. Everything but stealth gets bumped, which actually does make Vex the most athletic character in the party. So, you know, uh, no more horses taking the lead on climbing up and down walls. For our new teamwork feat, there's zero question on this one. We're immediately grabbing Tandem Trip, which I've been anticipating for quite some time now. That is a, a huge boost for Kaz, because it lets him roll twice every time you bite someone, using the higher result to determine whether or not they're tripped. The uh, feat will also come in handy for Vex once he hits level 13, because that is when we'll finally gain access to Aspect of the Wolf. As for our new spell, there's not really much else we want from level 2, uh, at least on the Hunter spell list. But given that Vex is now our main athletics and mobility guy, I guess we'll grab Effortless Armor, not the most exciting buff, but it will give us slightly more wiggle room with armor, and it is greater enduring compatible. That's it for Vex. Well, sort of. We do still have Kaz as well, who's technically just a glorified class feature. Aside from sharing tandem trip with Vex, Kaz also pulls some basic passives. Plus one base attack, plus one fortitude, and plus one reflex. And he also gets the usual skill bumps. Next we have Regil, who stays the course as a fearsome leader. Nothing particularly exciting this time around, just a flat plus one to base attack and fortitude saves. Skill points go into mobility and persuasion as usual. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Regil. Aside, of course, for Rule of Law. Law is slightly more involved, given that he's trailing one level behind Regil. Since he's just hitting level nine, he pulls plus one will multi-attack bonus, which I've been informed doesn't actually do much for animal companions, and a new feat. Skills are largely inconsequential, since Vex has now taken lead on athletics. That'll bounce back and forth a little as we uh, continue gaining levels, since Mythic Beast will keep stacking extra points into Law's strength. As for his new feat, I was originally just going to grab Weapon Focus Bite, but someone recently pointed out that apparently animal companions, with Intelligence 3, can go full crane style? <laughs> that is completely ridiculous, of course, but uh, but if it does in fact work, then I will happily take advantage of it. For now, that just means grabbing dodge for the plus one bonus to AC, and then improved unarmed at 11. 
past that, we, uh, we should theoretically be able to invest in Crane Style and Crane Wing, which will net us a total plus six bonus to AC, counting Dodge. Not too shabby. After that, we've got Ember, who pulls plus one base attack, plus one will, her first greater hex, and fifth level spells. Skills are skills, nothing notable there. But for her first greater hex, we'll be grabbing Beast's Gift. I will note, this is not the hex I originally had in mind for level 10, but it was recommended by a couple of viewers, and after testing it, it's definitely a good add for our particular party loadout. That hex can be used to grant extra bite attacks to other party members, and in the case of our pet pals like Zorm and Kaz, those extra bites are actually upgraded to tripping bites. The only downside is that Beast's Gift has to be manually applied per target, and it has a relatively short minute per level duration, 10 minutes currently, so uh, that is a little extra upkeep I'll have to keep in mind moving forward. As for new spells, we're staying focused on Evocation and Necromancy. Since there are literally no evocation options at level 5, we're just grabbing Waves of Fatigue instead. That one's great, because uh, as long as it punches through spell resistance, it automatically fatigues any living target in a 30-foot cone. No charging, minus 2 strength and dexterity, a pretty decent debuff with no saving throws attached. Also worth noting, though, uh, Ember does now gain access to Fire Snake as well. She gets that from the uh, Red Salamander Ring that we bought at the beginning of Act 2. That is a higher power fire spell that hits all enemies in a 60-foot line while automatically avoiding any friendly targets. That's it for Ember. Moving on, we've got Darren next. He hits level 10 in Oracle, which pulls plus one base attack and willpower, as well as improved uncanny dodge, and his first couple of fifth level spell slots. Nothing all that notable on skills, but I believe he is still our lead in Persuasion. As for spells, he automatically picks up Breath of Life, which is our first low-grade resurrection spell. A uh, particularly fun note there is that you can craft potions of Breath of Life, so once we get a high-end brewing kit, we can theoretically just pour potions on the recently deceased to uh, get them back up and running again. Then uh, we're also grabbing Cleanse, which is just a fantastic all-around recovery spell. Aside from some modest healing, it also removes a boatload of assorted debuffs including a few particularly obnoxious ones, like Attribute Damage, Confusion, Exhaustion. Sadly, I don't think that one's compatible with Mythic Brewing. And that's it for Darren, a very solid level. Next we've got Lan, who's still looking at a full respec in Act 3. So I'm not too worried about this one. He hits level 9 in Demon Slayer, which grants plus one base attack and plus one will. He also picks up Evasion, which is a welcome defensive buff. Skills are skills. Vex is now ahead of him in athletics, so I let that one start lagging behind. Lan is still our lead on religion, though, if just barely. I believe Ember is one point behind him. And that is it for Lan, aside from Zorm's bump to level 10. Nothing but passive bonuses there. Plus one base attack, plus one fortitude, plus one reflex, as well as the usual skill bumps. As aforementioned, I uh, will be retooling Zorm in Act 3, so we can lean him into Intimidation, and uh, maybe Crane Style, too. But I'm not sure he's got enough feet slots for both. Which finally brings us to Arushale, our newest member. She hits level 10 in Espionage Expert, which pulls plus one base attack, plus one fortitude, plus one reflex, a new spell slot, a new favorite enemy, and a free combat feat. Not too shabby. Skills are skills, and she is definitely our most talented rogue. That will make Waldiff slightly redundant, if and when he finally comes back, but uh, he'll still be handy as a dedicated arcane buffer and a second row backstabber. As for her free feat, we're grabbing Point Blank Master. Improved crit would be nice, but I don't think she can get Point Blank Master with a normal feat slot. I think it normally requires fighter levels as a prereq, but that's ignored for the sake of ranger bonus slots. As for a new favorite enemy, we'll just tack in another demon subtype. Unfortunately, Wrath of the Righteous breaks demons down into three separate subtypes to keep it from being too OP. She already has two ranks in Demons of Magic, so we'll go ahead and drop her two new ranks into Demons of Slaughter. That covers stuff like Babao, Cambions, Incubi, all of which are pretty common right now. 
We'll also be grabbing Demons of Strength at level 15. That one covers really high-end stuff like Baylor's. But we uh, won't really have to worry about those guys until we get out towards Act 4. And that's it. Like I said, pretty straightforward this time around. And a few very notable gains for Kaz, Darren, Ember, and Arushalai. As always, feel free to let me know what you guys think. Your input is invaluable. Several of the choices I made today were based on viewer feedback. That said, let's uh, hit the pause button again. I'll set up our new spell slots, rearrange our hotbars, and then we'll get back to storming that castle. We'll be right back. And we are back. We're powered up and ready to go. We will still need to rest before we can use all the new toys we just got, but we're still in pretty good shape, so we'll just keep pushing on for now. At this rate, we might actually wrap up Act 2 without having to rest again. But we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. All it takes is one bad fight. A simple straw bed, made to last, built with dwarven solidity. Here we go. This is the, uh, this is the Grand Hall we saw the Sword of Valor in. So we're sure to have both guards and traps. Oh, okay. Disable magic trap. Yes, I, I think we will do that. And also that trap too. Thank you, Ember. I guess I should have technically done that with Lan, but she still got the job done. I sense something. Ah, see, this this is more Ember's speed. In fact, she can only fail it on a one. Cutting it a bit too close. Okay, trap's clear. Do we have more on the other side? Nope, nope, just a door. Kaiser, please stop trying to stick your face in that van. Thank you. All right, let's take these guys down and grab that banner. Nice, nice. Double bite. Not sure if that second bite got tripped, but he was already prone when it landed. We've got an evoker tucked in back. We 
Defeat is not an option. Okay, the uh, Ring of Chaotic Fascination does not buff hexes. I didn't think it did, but I figured it was worth verifying. Should have taken him down sooner. <laughs> yeah, okay, so double trip. That does work as advertised. Very nice. Slime-covered key. No description. Interesting. I'm glad I was useful to you. Lesser braces of archery. That's fun. I'm not sure it's worth swapping out the uh, plus four bracers, though. Plus one to hit is nice, but I feel like we're getting more mileage out of our current bracers. Okay, let's uh, grab the Sword of Valor and Skadoodle. This is going to get messy. Kneel before me. <laughs> You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Really missing communal resist about now. Storm's not doing so great. That'll 
will buy us a few seconds. Hey guys. Elder Brock. That's actually not too bad. The swarm of Brimorax was a lot scarier. You won't survive me. Too far. Or Zorm. Yeah, we're fine now. Kaiser, please don't punch my mouse. And we're done. That wasn't too bad, aside from the, like, 200 damage that Zorm soaked up. And Kaiser was getting awfully curious about all those things moving around on the screen. He's still here, he's just chilling out now. Layla's here too, but she slept through everything. So apparently that was not the real Sword of Valor. But we did get an Amulet of Natural Armor plus three. I'll take it. And we do have that one random side door, so I guess that's where we're headed next. Let's just slap that new amulet on someone real quick. Oh, that's what the slime covered key was for. Oh. Zorm? And we've got a prophet. Those guys are casters. But we've got surprise, so we'll be fine.
endure this. Okay, um... There we go. Had me worried there for a second. I mean, we would have dropped him either way. I just prefer to do it before he drops a flame strike on us. And a big old pit full of corpses. Delightful. Uh, okay. There's more ghouls. And even more ghouls. This is too many ghouls. I, I only ordered a few ghouls. This is far too many. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's set up to intercept. Nice, nice. We'll have to shuffle Regil down a little. Actually, Regil doesn't have combat reflexes, so he's not much good for interception. Nice, nice. could have Zorm intercept. He has combat reflexes. I think. I know Helpful does. Okay, well, we've, uh, we've thinned them out. We'll, we'll keep Regil over here. Yes, there's more. Cool. I mean, we're doing okay. No one's gotten paralyzed yet. That's the big concern here. out with the back liners. Make every strike count. Yeah, 
Yeah, they are uh, preferentially going after the people with the lowest ACs. They're just rolling badly. And we've got Nabasu. Times two. Level drain on Urushale. Interesting. I would have thought she'd be immune. We need to drop the Nabasu. Retreat is not an option. Uh, land. Land is held. Nice, nice. Double extra nice. Does does remove paralysis not get rid of hold? Huh. That doesn't seem right. Alright, well we'll just go with plan B then. Kill everyone. That should solve our problem. Hey, welcome back, Lan. You are nothing before me. Got a little dicey there towards the end, but no harm done. Of Lion's Heart. 
plus two tower shield of negative energy resistance. Which also grants a plus one morale bonus on saves versus fear. That is very much a creed item. A shame he never made it this far. The dead bodies give off an unbearable stench. With her left hand, the old woman pulls the dagger from the demon's body. Exhausted by the effort, she wipes her brow. Time did not bend me, it seems. I will show you one of the secret old passages that were used when Citadel Dresden belonged to us. The woman walks up to the wall and begins examining it. You'll get to the Sword of Valor more easily this way. Perhaps the demons don't know about this passage. Hmm. The demons. If you think about it, I've spent most of my life among them. I have to admit, there's something mesmerizing about them. A single demon might be weak, or pathetic, or cowardly. But when you see them as a collective, it isn't a mass of separate creatures, but a single great force, a tide, which might be temporarily slowed but never stopped. The front lines of the abyss, here on the lands of Galerion. Unstoppable, fanatical forward motion. We have something to learn from them, don't we? Uh, yeah. I mean, Creed might not agree, but... I feel like Vex would have notably less scruples. I mean, yeah, sure, why not? Long as it helps you get the job done. No reason to uh, shut yourself off from potential advantages. Do you think this knowledge will help you? Don't you know what happened in the River City? It was full of clever people who knew lots of useful things. But when misfortune came, they understood nothing. And they all fled and lived by guessing, forgetting all their knowledge. Yes, I, I do in fact remember that, Ember. And then Kaz and I rolled in and killed all the demons and saved the day. Seemed to work out for us okay. Because there is no discipline in Mendev's forces. Knowledge and weapons are useful. But they are worth nothing if the people wielding them lack the most important thing. Discipline. Well, I'm gonna hard disagree with you on that one, Regil. You've met me, right? You care so much about people. About your soldiers and the Crusaders from the River City. And everyone else. You think you can teach them how to do things the right way. To protect them from their own mistakes. By force, if you have to. But don't you see that your teaching only brings them more pain? I don't care about people's pain. The only thing that matters is getting results. And experience shows that people who talk about goodness and compassion are only good at one thing. Serving themselves up for the demons like meat on a platter. The woman cast you a pensive look. Others would say such things are dangerous. Others... But not me. Hmm. Here it is. The demons are hiding the Sword of Valor behind this door. Be wary. I heard them bragging about the traps that surround the banner. Magical, of course. The Sword of Valor is nearly impossible to destroy. And if they wish, they will drown the entire room in fire, destroying their enemies while leaving their trophy unscathed. Go now. And good luck. Sounds like Yaniel has gotten a bit less righteous in her captivity. Can't say uh, I blame her, though. A hundred years. It's a miracle she can even form full sentences. You're a good person. I like you.
We'll do a little scouting, but we are past time, so we need to find a good stopping point. Alright, that looks to be our real Sword of Valor, warded by deadly traps with a conspicuous puzzle lock. I finished here. Is there more? Yeah, I think this is a good place to oh. <laughs> Hold on. Oh my goodness. Embers down. You crossed the wrong month. <sighs> okay, that was mildly disconcerting. You know what? I might have uh, Ember too far to the front. Let's shuffle our formation a little. Yeah, I guess that'll do. Land's got like a 30 AC. He's, uh, he's safer than Ember, at least. Alright, well, with that minor heart attack out of the way, I think we are at a good stopping point. A rotating puzzle sits before us, its guardian dead, and a series of traps blocking our progress. Seems pretty straightforward. We'll hit the pause button for now, I will poke at this puzzle off screen, and we will pick up here next time as we get this thing solved, grab the banner, and get one step closer to the end of Act 2. See you then! And remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or uh, maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description.